So uh, today I'll be talking about vectors and voids. So um, a vector is anything with both uh, magnitude and direction. Uh, and basically everything you can think of is a vector, uh, like gravity, a planet's orbit, a bullet. They're all vectors. Um, and so direction is just the direction of this object. And the object can be anything. It can be a particle. It can be a shape. Uh, and, the, and the magnitude can be anything that like, is applied in that direction. So it can be the speed of the object. Uh, it can be the strength. It can be the length. Uh, but how does it apply to voids? Well, uh, for voids, uh, the vector is the direction of the void and the speed of, in which like, the void is traveling in. So uh, what are voids? Voids are an artificial life program developed by Craig Reynolds in the 1990s. Uh, they're a system of only three rules to create a realistic bird simulation, flocking simulation, but they can really be applied to anything related to swarm dynamics. Um, they're called voids, uh, as in birdoids, like bird-like object. And as I mentioned, they only use three simple rules. Uh, and you can see there, uh, it should be playing like a simple void demonstration in 3D. So you can see uh, that's just uh, a 3D void demonstration. It's just every bird is interacting with, every void is interacting with each other using the three simple rules. And you can see it creates a pretty realistic flocking simulation. Uh, so what are those three rules? Uh, all right, uh, rule one, cohesion. So each void has a radius around it, and within that radius, every other void's average uh, position is calculated, and a vector is created in that direction. So you can see in that image over there, there's a void in the middle, and it has a radius, and every void around it, you can see its average position is calculated, and then a vector is created in that direction. So this just moves each void towards each other like birds do in real life, and this creates like the flocking motion of birds sticking together. The second rule is um, alignment. Alignment is similar to cohesion. There's a radius around every void. Within that radius, the average direction of every void is calculated, uh, and a vector is created in that direction. So you can see in that image, uh, there are two other voids in that radius, and their average direction is calculated, and a vector is created in that direction. And this uh, simulates how birds like flock in one direction and they stick together. So cohesion and alignment are basically like the backbone, backbone of the simulation. But we need one more rule to prevent these birds from just like colliding with each other. So the last rule is separation. Separation is just to make sure the voids don't like merge with each other uh, while they're moving. Uh, it's a smaller radius compared to alignment and cohesion. And within that radius, the voids basically uh, just get pushed apart. Like the average direction, the, the average negative di direction of every void is calculated and the vector is created in that direction. So this just like makes sure that each boy doesn't just like merge, because with the last two rules, if you just run those, every single void in the simulation will just merge into one, which is not how swarms work in real life. Uh, so I learned about this a while ago, but to test if these three very simple rules actually work, I created a, um, a simple boy demonstration in uh, PSJ, uh, in um, JavaScript. So uh, these are my sources. Uh, so this is just a recording of uh, my my void simulation. So this is like the base setting. Right now there are 300 voids on the screen. Um, and you can see how, this is just the three very simple rules, by the way, cohesion, alignment, separation. But you can see how they already create like this, uh, these swarm dynamics. And there's no other rules in, in the mix. It's just these three extremely simple uh, guidelines for every single one of these voids. Uh, but you can see, you can see how it's already creating like swarm uh, like swarms, but uh, I'll be changing a few of these settings in this video to simulate different types of swarms, and also um, <clears throat> this can be used for things that aren't birds, like such as fish shoaling. Um, but so this code's pretty simple. It's just it, I just coded the um, alignment. So here I'm going to change the alignment radius to be uh, much larger, and it'll create. Uh, mig migratory like simulation patterns where almost like you can see in the wild almost the entire uh, void population will uh, flock in like one direction even if they're in separate flocks they'll still move in the same direction because the alignment radius is super large so remember alignment um, is the rule that makes the voids travel in the same direction so you can see uh, slowly the voids will be traveling in like a unified direction even if they're in different flocks uh, and this sort of lag spec this sort of simulates um, like 
migratory patterns when birds have to all move in a in like the same direction and each bird communicates with each other to move in like that one direction. Um, and so that that's the earlier one. This is uh, for in, starlings are a type of bird that like have massive flocks and even if they're in the same flock they can still move in like different directions. So if I increase the cohesion radius but keep the alignment radius the same, the birds will try to move towards each other a lot more, but they won't move in the same direction. So you can see this creates a lot larger flocks that don't really have a unified direction, uh, like starlings in real life, or like fish rolling. Like when you see fish schools that move like as a group to evade sharks, that's like the motion they make. Uh, now for like smaller, for birds that move in smaller flocks, such as geese or um, water birds in general, uh, I can just decrease both cohesion and alignment to make smaller flocks that don't move in the same direction. So you can see here, um, compared to the first um, set of rules, these boids have a lot smaller flocks, and this is because I decreased like the radius for either of them. And you can see how like um, like these small parameters change a lot of uh, a lot of like the swarm dynamics. I also added one last rule, which isn't really in um, the original boids code, that like makes them fly apart if I bring my mouse near them. As you saw uh, in that last part, when I brought my mouse near the boids, they like flew apart. So yeah, um, so. Clearly, these three rules work, and it's really interesting to see how they create like realistic storm dynamics. Thank you.